Ever since humans first evolved, non-domestic African wildlife has been hunted for food and is called bushmeat. It was widely seen as a natural resource, free for people to take. Even today, bushmeat continues to play an important role in the lives of many people by providing a valuable source of protein. The animals that are hunted include non-primates like warthogs and primates like chimpanzees. In the past, hunting bushmeat was sustainable because both human and animal populations were balanced. But with the rapid increase in human populations and the urban demand for bushmeat, hunting has become unsustainable, and so governments have outlawed it, calling it poaching. Unfortunately, the introduction of guns has made poaching easier, and the result is that too many animals are being killed. People sell the meat and other animal parts to earn money. Meat is normally sold to a local market, whereas items like tusks and horns are sold overseas to meet the demand from the black market, which puts additional pressure on people to poach. Like poaching, trading ivory is illegal in most countries. But trading bushmeat and animal products is causing the serious decline of wildlife across Africa. The impact on the environment is devastating. The natural habitats where animals once lived, including forests and savannas, are slowly disappearing. What people often don't realize is the link that animals have with trees and plants affects the way we live. Without animals, the plants stop growing as their fruits aren't eaten and their seeds aren't dispersed properly. If the wildlife isn't preserved, then the tourism trade will be affected, which would lead to thousands of job losses. Realizing the scale of the problem, several initiatives have been designed in different countries to try and preserve wildlife and find alternatives to poaching. One such project is the Komoko Center in Zambia. Central to the project is the community-owned business called the Community Markets for Conservation and Rural Livelihoods. Community members are able to sell their fruit, grain and vegetables at a high price, as well as receive advice and training on how to farm their land in a way that helps conserve their area's wildlife. Many of the farmers here used to be poachers. Through support from the Komoko Center, they were encouraged to give up poaching and take up new productive methods of farming. Charles Ngoma of Ikraf believes that the main reason people hunted was for food. Uh, members of the communities are facing a very, very big problem. In fact, uh, for us to come up with this program, it's, uh, we had to conduct a baseline survey, which the result shows that the, uh, the main route for uh, poaching and uh, disturbance of wildlife was uh, food shortages and the lack of income. The only way forward for them to uh, have food was to do poaching, then from there at the same time cut the trees, use them for charcoal then, and, uh, and so forth. Former poacher Standwell Chiwa explains why he was convinced to give up hunting and hand in his weapon. Oh, I was forced to be a, a hunter just because of hunger. I had, I had no food, and the only source of uh, having food was killing animals and setting them. My life was in, in question, uh, in risk, I can say, because I was risking my life. Somebody can kill me in the bush, and uh, sometimes I can be arrested. So this is where I think my life has changed. I found that uh, these days, I'm staying peacefully. With help from Komako, Stanwell has learned how to maintain his vegetable garden. He now passes on this valuable knowledge to his friends. That's the thing I'm doing, teaching the, the locals, my fellow local men, how to do conservation farming. Charles explains how the community trading center has helped transform people's lives. People are able to have food because of the new methods of farming. People are able to have income because whatever they have or whatever they produce, the surplus they are able to sell it to uh, the community trading center. Farming is one way in which people can earn a living instead of poaching, as well as having a supply of food. Other ways include peanut butter making, chicken farming, fish farming, 
and beekeeping. The Komako Center has had a big impact on this Zambian community. People have stable incomes, have acquired new skills, and the wildlife is able to thrive again. Charles hopes that their success can be a role model for others in Africa who want to live alongside their wildlife. It's difficult for a farmer to do it alone, to form something like a, a trading center. But if they come up together, say form a group, and these are what we call producer groups, if they can form that, it's very easy for them to share knowledge such that they can easily come up with a community trading center. Standwell has his own advice too. It's very important to be to protect the wild animals. First thing why we should protect our wildlife, uh, wild animals, is that tourists bring a lot of money. They come to see our animals and they they bring money to us. Two, our children they didn't know what buffalo is, so that's very important to keep wildlife. Everything should be treated as we treat ourselves, yes.